John Bolton's new book is called The Room Where It Happened, which really just sounds like a tell-all romance novel about Bolton's first three-way with Trump and Pompeo, which is now an image that nobody can remove from their minds. Or it prompts us to ask the question, you know, ask Bolton, where on the doll did Trump touch him? Was, was it the orifice where his genocidal rage comes from? Which, which is also now an image that none of us can unsee. And look, I'm, I'm so dedicated to using my comedy to speak truth to power that I'm inducing my own nightmares. Okay, so, so you're welcome. Now, Bolton's new book is all about the problems with Trump starting on day one. Right on day one, Bolton was so upset that Trump couldn't figure out how to bomb Syria. He was mad that a corporatist windbag couldn't turn into a warmongering windbag. But as we remember, eh, well, well, maybe. I mean, in the age of social media and corporate news, most people have the attention span of a gnat. Right? But, but anyway, in, in April of 2017, the U.S., the U.K., and France did lead a bombing raid in Syria after it was said that Assad gassed his own people. We now know that to be false. The OPCW didn't have a chance to go into Duma to investigate, and by the time they did, they realized that there kind of wasn't a chemical attack. Right, And then the U.N. had to justify the attack. I mean, the OPCW whistleblowers have even come out and said that they were pressured into coming up with evidence for the chemical attack. I mean, this, this is kind of like pressuring someone to have an erection. You know, they just don't happen. Well, unless you're like 12, right? Then, then they kind of happen all the time. And then you and your best friend are really confused about each other for a little while. Or, or if you're like a professional porn star. You know, you, that unless you're a professional porn star, you, you don't really bone her up on command. Just like unless you're a professional warmongering liar, you don't come up with falsified evidence of chemical attacks on command. And, okay, look, really I shouldn't even have to say this, but I do. This is not an endorsement for Assad. It's to say that we can't go into countries drones ablazing just because we're America. Okay, th this is a long-standing pattern of lying us into armed conflicts that all end up being an, an effort to fill the pockets of a small group of people. So the point is that we need to use our logic and investigate these things before launching missiles into a nation. Now. If the reasoning to go to war in a country is to use chemical, it's the use of chemical weapons on its citizens, how come no one waged a war on America for using chemical weapons on our citizens? Right? The Black Lives Matter protests were met with rubber bullets and tear gas, something the Geneva Conventions has banned. So, so does that mean that countries that abide by the Geneva Conventions have the right to attack the United States for gassing their own people? I mean, this, there's also countless points in history where striking workers were met with military force. Does that mean that Denmark is allowed to attack air bases in America? I mean, if the justification for the American war economy to decimate a country is gassing its own people, does it not work the other way around? Now, Bolton's book addresses none of these questions, right? Thinking about these questions actually makes Bolton's mustache shrink just like a centimeter per thought. And, that, and that's terrifying. Could you imagine a non-mustachioed John Bolton? He'd, he'd pretty much just look like Mitch McConnell. But that was just the tip of the iceberg for Bolton, right? He also had issues with Trump attempting peace talks with Russia and North Korea. In a very dramatic interview with ABC where he tells all and bears not just his soul, but also the nudity of his war criminal mustache. He talks about how he was frozen in his seat when Putin and Trump met in Helsinki. Sounds like someone was promised some alone time and didn't get it. Yep. Sounds like someone was promised a little tug on their stash and didn't get it. Sounds like someone is jealous as hell, is what that sounds like.
Now, this was right after the accusation of Russian hacking of the election, but the investigations into this accusation hadn't even really started. But corporate media had claimed these accusations alone were the proof that they needed. You know, America really is a nation that turns history into its own choose-your-own-adventure book. Not only that, but Putin said he'd be willing to cooperate with the investigation and give the FBI anything that they needed to figure out this mess. But of course, that wasn't the narrative that the media reported. Despite the FBI essentially proving that the Russiagate narrative was utter nonsense and a conspiracy similar to QAnon, Rachel Maddow, the DNC, and the corporate Democrats find new ways to reignite this McCarthyist candle. And now they're praising Bolton for his book. One of the biggest reasons for that being is that he validates the Russiagate psychosis. Now, the Kremlin data resistance in Bolton's objection to trying to make peace with North Korea uh, was, was him trying to make peace with North Korea, right? Now, look, I doubt that Trump was doing this for altruistic reasons. I'm pretty sure when Trump hears the word altruism, it makes his brain immediately shut down and it goes into like a capitalistic rage and purchases a casino to bankrupt. He did it so people would like him. And though, and, and, and they would like think that he's a great man or like a mediocre god king or a watchable reality TV star. Now, Bolton claimed that Trump had a bromance with the North Korean dictator. I mean, kind of sounds like somebody's jealous they didn't take up the day one offer of a militaristic mustache ride, you know? Now, Trump wanted to decrease the war games from the U.S. military around North Korea to encourage peace talks with South Korea, which has basically been treated as an American military colony since the Korean War. And to Trump's credit, he kind of did set up a peace talks in, in Hanoi. In September of 2018, he actually got peace talks going, right? North and South Korea agreed on a few things like co-hosting the Olympics, decreasing the military demonstration, removing guards from the demilitarized zone, and opening up tourism between the two countries. I mean, this was good for peace, but bad for war, which meant that Bolton's mustache was starting to shrivel up, and he was trans making his transformation into Mitch McConnell. So, at the last minute, Bolton changed the deal, but he doesn't outline this in the book, right? South Korea has actually come out and bashed Bolton for distorting the truth. They said that it, this represents a violation of the basic principles of diplomacy, which could harm the sincerity of future negotiations. John Bolton single-handedly could have ignited an armed conflict in Korea again to feed the military industrial complex and also that genocidal orifice of his. Now, Bolton also called Trump soft on China, which is very upsetting because Bolton really, really likes to see Trump hard. And he was upset there wasn't enough war on terror. Translation, Trump didn't spend enough on war, divide the nation even further, and created even more xenophobic hate. The question is, how does a book like this even get written, right? Especially if it's revealing so-called state secrets and behind-the-scenes decisions about the presidency. Now, whistleblower, radio host, and author John Kiriakou has pointed out uh, things like this follow something called the Marchetti Standard. In the 70s, retired CIA analyst turned author Victor Marchetti wrote a fiction book about the intelligence community. The CIA asked the federal courts to put a temporary injunction saying that he was revealing classified information. They won and edited Marchetti's book down from 336 pages to 168. So when you see shows like Jack Ryan or movies like Black Panther where the CIA, where, where there are CIA agents involved, the agency has combed through the whole script to ensure that the narrative they want is being presented on screen. There's even a scene in Black Panther particularly where the CIA agent points out blatantly about how they run coups, that the CIA runs coups in other countries and that's done on purpose. 
Okay, this gives the audience the illusion that CIA coups only happen in a world with super soldiers, in a country with magic metal and the Hulk. And when you see people like John Krasinski giving interviews about how great the CIA is, it's done on purpose to bolster the image of the agency. Especially when you have a president that talk shit on them constantly, right? You, you get that actor that, that's got that cute, dopey look, you know, kind of when he, when he turns to the camera and goes, well, huh? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I'm just, uh, I'm just here and I'm kind of cute. Just one of you guys, you get one. Of, you get that guy, and you're like, "Hey, the CIA is great." That's, and then everybody's like, "Oh, maybe the CIA is great." That's how that works. Now, Kiriakou himself had to fight back against the CIA after he served his time for blowing the whistle, but he pushed back against them. Right? The Marchetti Sandrick says that the CIA has 60 days to make the changes. During the release of his first book, Kiriakou had to hire an attorney, and the CIA wanted to re uh, redact 120 pages. But he fought them hard enough, and he got his book published the way that he wanted. The second and third book he submitted for review the day after Christmas. They didn't get to it for over 100 days, and then tried to ask him for an extension. Yeah, Kiriakou just looked at them and responded, forget it, this is Arlington. Now, John Bolton basically did the same thing with his book. He worked closely with the State Department and the White House to craft his book to be exactly what the intelligence community wants it to be. This now gives the Democrats a leg up by possibly using it as a way to make Trump a one-term president. They could subpoena him and make the, the distorted reality presented in the book as official statements to once again justify the Russiagate narrative. The Democrats are willing to line up with a Republican warmonger to ensure that they win. I mean, is this really a party that any progressive would like to be entangled with? Or, or really, is it a party that any Democrat would like to be entangled with for that matter? And just to recap, just in case a, a pigeon flew by going, Coo! Coo! Russian coo! John Bolton basically is upset that President Donald Trump did not bomb the country of Syria fast enough or Afghanistan more. John Bolton is mad that North and South Korea entered into peace talks and sabotaged the whole thing. He thought... Getting out of the Iran nuclear deal was a great idea. John Bolton thought trying to have diplomatic relationships with Russia, something that John F. Kennedy tried to do, was nefarious. And the Democrats believe that John Bolton is their mustachioed savior for 2020. I mean, the only way the Democrats can ensure more death and destruction is by not approving Medicare for all during a global pandemic. Oh. Oh, fuck. Wait. Now oh, they're doing that already. Shit. Okay, look. Now, I shouldn't have to say this, but I do. My criticism of the Democratic Party and a sociopathic war hawk like John Bolton isn't an endorsement for Trump. Far from it. Look, I don't like the guy, but I have enough neurons firing in my brain to be objective about certain things. I have watched the corporate media enough to know when I'm being fed lies because they're the same lies we were fed to to go to war with any country that doesn't want to use the petrodollar and thought that wearing an American, if you, if you went against the idea of wearing an American flag around your dick was awesome, then you need to be bombed. And all of that has just justified more xenophobic hate towards people that look like me just as much as Trump's nonsensical racist rhetoric. And the Democrats have now decided to praise the lesser of two xenophobes? I, I, I don't know what the hashtag is for that. But John Bolton's book is nothing more than novelized propaganda. It normalizes nationalistic pride and machismo. It promotes manufacturing consent for more profit-driven wars. And it proves that we as a nation are an economy of war. John Bolton is not someone that deserves praise regardless of what room he is, he's in. And that has been your dispatch 
for this week. Uh, I've got some pretty awesome live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. The Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows are going on all through the summer, and we'll, they'll probably be going. Uh, they'll probably be going into the fall and the winter as well. If you would like to purchase a ticket to them, they are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Or just check the description of this podcast and you will find a link that will take you to grab tickets for their shows each week. It's a brand new show. Each Citizen Revolution show is is brand new. Very seldom do I repeat material, uh, but we talk about a different topic every single week. We talk about some current events news uh, every single week, um, and we also donate uh, half of the ticket sales to a grassroots organization. This week on July 17th, which is the next show, July 17th, I'm going to be donating half of the ticket sales to uh, Pittsburgh Mutual Aid, who are helping people uh, with, with groceries, supplies, uh, rent, they, any, any sort of assistance that they need. They're connecting um, p- you know, communities together. They're, they're connecting people with, with, with each other to make sure that we can all lend each other a hand. Um, and uh, uh, you know, they're an all-volunteer organization. They purchase groceries for people when they need to. So we're donating half of the ticket sales to Pittsburgh Mutual Aid. Uh, so the Citizen Revolution shows July 17th, but we got more coming up on August 7th, August 14th, and on August 28th. Along with that, I'm also going to be doing a couple of Fringe Festival shows. The, the, the uh, most uh, recent one, the next upcoming one, is the Fringe PVD for the Providence, Rhode Island Fringe Festival uh, on July 30th and 31st at 6 p.m. Uh, it's an all-donation festival. All the donations will be going uh, directly back to the artists that uh, uh, are performing in these virtual festivals. I'm going to be doing a version of the Citizen Revolution show for the Providence Rhode Island Fringe Festival. Uh, And uh, uh, like I said, it's all donation based. And uh, if you would like to be a part of the live virtual audience, you can make a donation and let the people at the Fringe Festival know and they will add you to the roster to be part of the live virtual audience for the Fringe Festival, which is very exciting. Uh, That's on July 31st and July 30th at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, But you can join from anywhere across the country. That's the cool thing about doing these virtual festivals. And on July 24th, I will be doing the Virtual Gas, which is an amazing weekly show run by my good friend Rob Green, who's been on this podcast before. And uh, uh, it's a super fun, loose show. All of my dates are available right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. And while you're there, you can also make a one-time donation if you want to help out uh, this show, if you want to help out, um, uh, you know, help me continue creating uh, all of this content and and make a donation, you can do so uh, right on my website. But you can also become a sustaining member, uh, which gets you perks like free tickets, unreleased stand-up comedy material, uh, and bonus merch that's coming out as well uh you'll also be the first one to know when i'm dropping a new album of of any kind so uh make sure that uh that if if all of that stuff entices you and you uh are able to 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 make a sustaining membership uh that uh, that you do so uh and you can also purchase my album there and there's going to be some new merch coming up as well so once again the the website is krishmohanhaha.com that's k-r-i-s-h-m-o-h-a-n-h-a-h-a dot com